All right, let's go ahead and take a look at page eight here. So it says that Shelly, the skater, has a total mass of 25 kilograms. That's really important. All right, if you had trouble with this page, it's probably because you missed this. So, and then he propels himself by rocket power. So he's got an applied force in that direction. Um, and we're going to take a look at what happens if the force were these various forces. Okay. So we're going to complete the table where resistance effects can be neglected. So in other words, there's zero newtons for the force of friction. Well, if I've got a force of 100 newtons that this rocket is providing, and I have no resistance, then there's a total of 100 newtons acting in the forward's direction. Well, if our buddy Shelley here has a mass of 25 kilograms, we're going to end up figuring out that his acceleration will end up equaling 4 meters per second squared. So if we use F equals ma, I know the force getting from over here is 100. His mass is 25 kilograms. And that doesn't change for any of these problems. If it's his mass, it wouldn't make sense for it to change. It would mean that he lost the limb in his, exper in his experimenting or something like that. So we're going to get acceleration by itself, or A by itself. We're left with 100 divided by 25, which is 4. So the acceleration is equal to 4 meters per second if he's 25 kilograms, and if the force of the rocket is 100 newtons. Same deal with the second one down here. The only difference is I'm going to end up replacing the 100 with 200. 200 divided by 25 would give me 8. And then for the last one, we already know the acceleration. We're going to solve for the force. All right, so we know that his mass is equal to 25 kilograms. That still hasn't changed. We're given an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. Asked to solve for the force. Well, 25 times 10 gives us 250. And in this case, it's not in meters per second squared like it was over here because now we're solving for a force, which would be in newtons. Part B, some people struggled with. Um, I think the main thing is just the um, reading fully through the problem and knowing what exactly this resistance means here. So if we complete the second table where we have a res resistance of a constant 50 newtons, that means for this first problem, if my rocket here is providing 50 newtons of thrust in this direction, and I've got resistance of 50 newtons back in this direction, then I'm going to end up with zero meters, or sorry, zero newtons of force in any one direction. So his acceleration would be zero. If he's at rest, that means he's not going to move. If he's already moving, that just means that he will continue to move, but he's just not going to speed up or slow down. Keep that in mind. All right, so what happens if I have a constant 50 Newton worth of force on, um, against an uh, applied force of 100? It'll just be 100 minus 50 is going to give me my net force. So it'd be like this is 100 Newtons pushing this way, 50 Newtons back. I'm going to end up with a net force still in this direction of 50 Newtons. Right. And then plug it into the F equals MA equation, just like we did over here. Solving, you'll end up with 2. Reasoning for this last one is very similar. You've got a force of, let's just change this to 200 Newtons, 50 pushing back. 200 minus 50 would give us 150 Newton, 150 Newtons. Plug in an F equals MA, and we get 6 meters per second squared of acceleration. All right, let's take a look at number two here. So that a ball rolls down a constant slope, what's its acceleration? Uh, decreasing, constant, or increasing? Um, I don't know why I said increasing at first, because it's actually uh, it's constant. It's constant acceleration. Um, it's increasing velocity, but this is asking us for acceleration. So um, there's various reasoning behind it. But if we look at the normal force, would be pushing this ball this way. Gravity would be pulling it down. But if we break our normal force up into components, some 
of that normal force is going to be holding the ball up. Some of that normal force is going to be causing the ball to move forward further and further and further in this direction. It would continue to accelerate the ball between the normal force and the force of gravity, but uh, it would not speed up. I mean, sorry, it would speed up. It just wouldn't it's speed up faster and faster and faster every single time. It would continue to increase its speed at the same rate. So what happens if the ramp becomes steeper? What's going to happen to acceleration? If I have a ramp that's now steeper like this, let's take a look at what would happen to my normal force. So let's put the ball over here. Normal force, again, is always perpendicular to a surface. Misconcept, common misconception is that it's opposite of gravity, but it's not. It's opposite of surface or perpendicular to a surface, I should say. Gravity is still going to be pulling us down. Take a look at our normal force. How has it changed from the normal force over here? If I break it up into components, just like I did over here, what's going to end up happening is I've got a lot of normal force going in this direction, very little normal force going in the upwards direction. So my normal force is actually going to cause this ball to accelerate faster than if this ramp were more shallow. All right, number three, when a ball rolls down the ramp, varying slope, the ball's acceleration is greater at the top, which is really weird, right? Because we would expect that it would be greater at the bottom, but we've got to be careful with what acceleration is. Acceleration is not speed, it's speeding up. So where am I speeding up the most in this diagram? At the top, I'm speeding up the most because I have the most amount of force pushing in this direction. My normal force is pushing in this direction. By the time I'm down here, my normal force is still perpendicular to the surface, so it's pushing up this direction. By the time I'm down here, looks like my normal force is pushing almost entirely up, maybe just a little bit to the right still, but almost entirely up. So what's happening here? Well, my normal force is going from, if we look at the x components, from fairly large to not as large to very small. So I'm going to have the most amount of normal force pushing me in this direction at the top because of the incline of that ramp. By the time I get to the middle, my normal force is starting to even out, and there's... Uh, if we break our normal force up into components, there's just as much normal force in the upwards direction as there is in the outwards direction. By the time I get to the bottom, my normal force is almost entirely pointed up and not really pushing my ball forward at all anymore. So there's going to still be acceleration because I still have some normal force there um, that is not directly upright. But it's not going to be anywhere near as much acceleration as I had to begin with. So the ball will continue to be getting faster, but it just won't be getting as fast um, in terms of the, the rate of acceleration as it did to begin with. So we're speeding up quite a bit. We just haven't had a lot of time pass. So our ball is actually the slowest up here, even though it's got the most acceleration. And by the time we get to the bottom, it's accelerated this entire time there's less acceleration now, but it's still acceleration nonetheless, so I'm actually going to have the fastest speed at the bottom. So this is a really special case. So in this special case, the speed is actually greatest when the acceleration is the least, or to say it the other way, if we have great speed, the acceleration is actually the least. So this is a really special case scenario only when we have a ramp that it looks like this, that our acceleration will get smaller and smaller and smaller, but our speed will continue to increase. Um, so there is a big difference, remember, between acceleration and velocity.